Today, I'm gonna to teach you how to make Marjorie Tyrell's Rose Mead. Let's get started. So in today's video, we're learning how to make Marjorie Tyrell's Rose Mead. This is a mead that is of course rose based and based off Marjorie, Marjorie Tyrell from Game of Thrones. Um, I got this recipe from Alehorn and I'll put the link in the description. I've done a total of about five of these recipes and there are eight on the website. Hopefully gonna get through them all. So this mead has been really interesting to make and I have it here. I'm gonna walk you through the whole process of everything I did. Um, I think you're really gonna enjoy it. So first of all, you'll need this recipe right here. It is two pounds of honey. I use blueberry honey in this case. Two ounces of dried rose petals. One teaspoon of lemon juice, excuse me, tablespoon of lemon juice. Uh, one half teaspoon of wine tannin. A half a teaspoon of Fermate O. I actually put a whole teaspoon in. Um, that's a yeast nutrient. Three grams of Mangrove Jack's MO5 yeast. You can also use any wine yeast in general and um, one cup of cherry juice for color. I didn't actually end up using this, so you could use it if you want to. And the last thing was that Fermate O. So the, uh, the Fermate O is super important because it is a yeast nutrient. Yeast need nutrients to be able to ferment, so make sure you add that properly. First things first, you take and get all of your equipment. Here's all the equipment you might need for this brew. Um, you could of course do this in any other Thing you want to do but this just this equipment here will help you do it in a better way um, once you have your equipment you're gonna sanitize everything with a star sand or some sort of sanitizing a brewing grade sanitizer once you do that you mix your ingredients your honey your water your yeast your rose petals the lemon juice the wine tannin um, and the permade oh literally everything on that except for the in my case I did not use the cherry juice so you could add the cherry juice there as well once that is mixed, you are going to take a gravity reading using a hydrometer, and mine started at 1.065, meaning that we are somewhere in the realm of a 8.5%-ish mead if it fermented out completely. What I did was I stirred that stuff up, and um, I ended up taking and putting my airlock and stuff on it and then putting it away. I came back to the mead um, about two or three weeks later, and I... I Throughout the process had to punch the cap, which means you take and you push the rose petals down to ensure that they don't, um, that will they stay submerged essentially. Came back after I saw it slow down and I had taken a gravity reading. Um, I noticed that the new gravity was 1.004. So I assumed it was pretty much done. I went ahead and racked it off of those rose petals, took a did a taste test, super rose heavy in my face, like literally getting punched and pelted in the face with roses. but. It turned out to be pretty good and uh, it just needed some time. So I put it back, put it away for another basically month um, to just sit. In that time, I did rack it over into a new container to get off any of the sediment as it dropped down. And then I came back and decided I wanted it to be sweeter. In order to do this, I had to stabilize it. Now I did this in a different fashion. You can choose to stabilize before back sweetening by adding potassium sorbate or uh, potassium metabisulfite or a pasteurization method. Essentially, this just halts any possible yeast fermentation, which is nice. What, what I did with this one, I tried to stay as true to Game of Thrones as possible and not use any of the sorbates or anything. I went ahead and added my honey to get it to the sweetness level I desired, and then I bottled it. Now, what's important here is that my next step was to take and pasteurize it. Yeah, meaning that I took the bottle, put them into a pot with some water, I put a towel at the bottom, and I put a bottle in the middle. When I put that bottle in the middle, I put water in it, and I heated the water surrounding all of those bottles up to 145 degrees, and I held it there for 15 minutes. In that time, yeast in the bottles, they literally die, so they can't do anything with that new sugar, which saves us from having any carbonation or bad things. And that was about, I don't know, probably two weeks ago. Let's go ahead and do a taste test. The rose color looks really nice. It's a little hazy. It was not as hazy before I um, added new stuff to it, but that's okay. It definitely smells super rose-esque. It's got that um, bright, bright flower in your face. The blueberry honey I used was really nice. I liked it a lot. It adds some fruitiness to this thing. Um, I didn't use the cherry juice. I will remind you of that. I could have used it, but I decided not to. 
Oh yeah, this thing is so, um, the, the tannic value, the uh, way that it coats your mouth and it kind of, it doesn't just drink down like water. When you think water, it's very flat, doesn't have any like brightness or anything like that. This has more of a, um, a coating effect and I can uh, sense that the rose petals added a nice tannic value to this alongside the tannin we added. I will say that once the uh, primary fermentation was done, this thing had a very um, a thick, <laughs> I don't know if that's the right word, thick feel, mouthfeel to it. So this is super good though. And I'm very impressed with the, the simplicity of the recipe and just how smooth it is. It's eight and a half percent ABV. When we back sweetened, we got it up to about a 1.01, I think it was four or five. So it's got some uh, sweetness to it, which is nice. It, it pronounces the rose flavor. You really get a lot of the, um, the tannic value like I talked about, and it's just super good. I, I'm a big fan of this. So this was super simple to make, and that's the process. You need to take the recipe, you need to take the, the whole thing and just try it yourself. I used dried rose petals I got off of Amazon. If you have another alternative option, I would go with those two. Essentially, you just need to get rose petals of some sort for this. This is a rotamel. That's technically what it is. It is a rose petal mead, and it is super good. I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you'll go make this. If you have a question about this mead, go down below and ask it and you know, make sure to hit the like and all that stuff for everything else. But I've enjoyed this greatly. I hope you will uh, join me again in the future for another one. I have, um, I have a bunch of these. I have Sansa's mead. I have John, John Snow's mead. Um, who else do I have? I have Tyrion's mead. I have, um, I'm pretty sure that's, yeah, I've, I've got quite a few of these Game of Thrones mead recipes. So. I, I enjoy them greatly and I think you will too. So with that, go make some mead and watch some Game of Thrones. I'll see you next time. Cheers.